Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today, as we said in the previous video, we are going to put together the clock circuit and get the CPU to free run. The full schematics of today's video will be available on my website, link down below in the description. So, as you can see here, as you can see here, I have all the components needed for the build: the 555 timer, the Z80, some resistors, LED. And a capacitor for the timing circuit of the ZD80 uh, of the 555 timer. <clears throat> As you will see in a moment, I am using pre cut wires of the exact length to keep the build neat. It's not necessary for the function of the computer, but I, won't, I would strongly recommend it because it's easier to troubleshoot it, to troubleshoot it if any problems occur, which I'm pretty sure it will at some point. For wiring, I am using this 22AWG solid core wire. I would recommend getting more colors so you can color code the different signals, mainly to differentiate between data, address and control signals. My local electronics store had black and red only, so I am working with whatever I have available. I am also using different color LEDs, as you can see right here, red, green and blue, to differentiate between the different signals of the Z or Z80 that we are going to observe. So enough talking, let's give the time lapse. As you can see here, the circuit is functioning and many LEDs are blinking. Over here in the left, we have the 555 timer, which pulses every few seconds. Also, this red LED is connected directly to the output of the 555 timer, so we can see at what speed the circuit runs. Moving, moving to the right, we can see up here the four LEDs that represent the lower nibble of the hazardous pass of the C80. Starting with the least significant bit over here and the most significant bit over here, A0, A1, A2 and A3. And we can see it counts up in bi binary sequence. Here we can see the reset button of the circuit. So if we press the reset button, everything resets. We, uh, we, have to, uh, we will use this button to reset everything in the computer. And here in the far right we have the Z80 CPU with some resistors connected to it and some LEDs connected to it also. Um, 
To better understand why everything is flashing like this, you have to take a look at the Z80 diagram, pinout diagram first to understand what every pin does, and then add some timing diagrams and some opcode diagrams. So let's go over the computer next. So here we are on the computer. First of all, let's take a look at the pinout of the Z80. Here is the pinout of the Z80 CPU. As we can see, pins 11 and 29 are the power pins of the CPU. As we can see also here, marked with D, let me highlight them, marked with D is the data bus of the CPU. The CPU reads and writes data to this 8-bit long port. These numbers here are marked with the letter A, which means address. The CPU places values here to tell the RAM or the ROM which location it wants to read data from. Here, the phi symbol is the clock input for the CPU. The rest of the, the, rest of the pins uh, are control pins to control the flow of data to the rest of the system or to control different parts of the system. Then one the M1 pin is a signal that signifies when a new bus cycle is executed. Um, read, write and memory requests together are responsive to con uh, for controlling the memory, uh, mainly the RAM and the ROM of the system. Also, a refresh, uh, refresh is used to refresh the dynamic RAM. All we know that dynamic RAM is needed to be refreshed every few moments, so the refresh pin does that for us. Um, interrupt and NMI um, over here uh, are used to create uh, interrupts for the CPU. IO request together with read and write, read and write um, is used to control the I.O. of the system. Hold is used to signify when a hold condition occurs to the computer. For example, if someone, uh, if the programmer needs to hold the computer, it tells the CPU to hold and the CPU will accept this signal low. So uh, what's left? A reset is used to reset the CPU. Um, Wait, bus request and bus act is uh, they are used to uh, communicate with other devices in the system. For example, uh, wait, uh, wait is used for inserting wait states to the CPU. If a memory device connected to the bus is slow, it asserts wait states to the CPU so it can um, it can respond. And when it responds, it, responds uh, it takes the wait states away, so the CPU will read from that um, memory device. Another example, bus request is used when a floppy controller is connected to the system. Let's say you need to copy a whole block of data from a floppy disk to your RAM. You don't need to pass every byte uh, through the Z8 CPU. So for that reason, the, memo the floppy controller asserts the bus request signal and makes uh, the, that eff effectively makes the CPU transparent and then the, the controller of the uh, floppy drive actually copies the whole block from the floppy disk to the RAM. Then the bus request is back to uh, logic high and the CPU executes again um, the instructions that it needs to execute. Uh, that, uh, th uh, that whole execution um, it's named DMA, Direct Memory Access. So uh, let's take a look at how things are connected in the breadboard. So uh, here is the cl classic Z80 no tester schematic. <clears throat> As you can see, each bit of the data bus is connected to ground via 10k resistor, as you can see over here. It will make sense why later in the, in the video. NMI and interrupt are connected to VCC via a 10K resistor because every signal that is um, 
with a dot over here in the CPU means that is active low. Active low means that um, the signal is energized or uh, it's active when a low level signal is applied. For example, zero volts. We don't need to activate interrupt or NMI. That's why we are pulling them high via those two 10K resistors. Also, weight is pulled high to 10K to VCC with 10K resistors, bus request and bus also, and reset. But reset also has this uh, push button switch that connects it to ground. So uh, we want to activate the reset and we activate with the active load signal. So when we press the button, it will make uh, contact from the reset to the ground. Also, over here, as you can see, uh, we've got connected some LEDs to the M1 signal, the memory request signal, and the read signal. Those signals, remember, are active low, so we connect the negative leg of the, of the LED um, to the signal, and actually the positive, leg, the positive leg at the positive, at the VCC. So when the M1 is active, this pin will go active low, so it will have a negative, uh, a zero potential, a ground potential, so the current will flow from VCC to ground through the M1 signal. It's exactly the same with the other ones. And here we've got the address bus uh, counter, the 4-bit counter that you saw in the video, and the time lapse in the video before, uh, connected to A0, A1, A2 and A3. Here these signals are not inverted, as you can see they don't have the bubble over there, so we can connect them normally. The positive end of the LED goes to the output and the negative goes to the ground. Uh, and here we have the classic uh, 555 timer circuit with a capacitor between 1 and 2, 2 and 6 um, tied together, 3 is the output which, go which goes to the clock input of the G80, and also lights up an LED to show us what, uh, what speed the circuit runs at. And also 6 and 7 are connected with a resistor and 7 and 8 we are connected um, with a resistor. It is better to connect a potentiometer here with the wiper at pin 6, uh, the left side of the potentiometer at pin 7, pin 7 and the right side at pin 8. I didn't have any potentiometer, so I did it with resistors. So, <clears throat> uh, now let's talk about why the LEDs are flashing that way. For that reason, we need to take a look at the timing diagram of the Z80. So, <clears throat> here we are in the timing diagram of the Z80. Um, as you can see here, the first M1 cycle after reading the data bus for input is always the same. Uh, let's see where it was. Yep, here. Uh, though uh, this is an instruction cycle, okay. The first instruction in the first uh, machine cycle, the first M1 machine cycle, it's the opcode fetch. It's the same for every uh, instruction. So let's see it here. As you can see here, uh, we have the file symbol, the clock. Each M1 cycle takes four T states. For, uh, for clock cycles, so that's why the M1 signal was flashing at four times lower the clock uh, the clock uh, LED flashed. So that was the reason for the for it. We can see here um, the M1 goes low first, so the M1 comes first, and then memory request and read. As you, if you remember, uh, actually memory request flashed twice. So first and second. Let me find the video to see it again. Um, over here, the second hill clip. Yeah. So, as you can see, yet yeah. as you can see here, um, the M1 flashes first, then the uh, read. Let me slow down. Can I slow down the? No, I can't slow down the video. Uh, if you can see, uh, firstly the M1 goes on. Secondly, the memory request, the memory request with the read, and then they are both going off, and the 
memory quest comes on again a little bit later so it totally corresponds uh, with the timing, time, timing diagram let's see it. the M1 goes low first memory quest and read go mm, not exactly together low but at least together as close as it is right here um, and then memory quest actually goes low uh, once again first memory quest goes low to put the program counter at the uh, address bus and this to put the refresh then to put the refresh address so uh, if you can see over here and if you remember the data the data bus is all grounded up grounded down so there is a reason for this and if we go to the other um, here in the Z80 technical manual PDF, we can see <coughs> that uh, that the no op instruction, the instruction that we are running, the opcode of it is 0000, which is 00 in hex. So and it takes uh, uh, cycles of uh, m m cycles. It takes one m cycle and it takes uh, 40 states so the time the timing the timing diagram and the um, uh, the breadboard and this uh, piece of paper also correspond um, with what we built so uh, everything it's working as intended so uh, that uh, that thing every time the CPU reads from the hypothetical um, ROM uh, but actually every time it reads the same instruction over and over again which is no operation and the CPU does nothing and it sits there to an endless endless loop so <clears throat> this was for this video and uh, I think in the next video I will uh, talk about the RAM and the ROM and actually the decode is separate also, we are going to run a single program to test everything that we've built until now. So, um, if you like the video, please like it. If you uh, want to not miss any other video, please go here and hit the subscribe button. Also, <clears throat> uh, click the bell icon to get notified every time that uh, uh, a video is uploaded. Um, helpful links we uh, they will be down in the description of the video like uh, the link of my website over here which uh, I am uploading uh, the videos of the series and many uh, many other things also down there it will be uh, the schematic uh, this one over here and many other helpful links so Thank you for now and until the next video, remember, keep working on retro computers. Bye!